Let's finally do an example in Rn. By now you know the drill, so I actually wrote down most of the problem on the blackboard already. And all that's left for us to do is fill in the blanks. But there is something very interesting and potentially confusing that happens in the case of Rn, so I'll go over that part very slowly. So we're once again given two vectors, and we're asked to evaluate a linear combination of those vectors. And once again, we won't do that directly, but instead we'll pick a basis and translate all of the elements of the, problems in, of the problem into the component space, evaluate the linear combination in component space, and then finally translate the components of the answer to the answer itself. But what's slightly confusing in the case of Rn is that the vectors themselves and their component space representations have the same format. Of course, the numbers will be completely different, but in both cases, we're looking at triplets of numbers. So in some situation, you may be looking at a triplet of numbers and not necessarily know whether it's the vector itself or its components with respect to some basis. So in this case, we're making it easy because we number one, color coded our spaces, and number two, we're writing this sub B to indicate that we're actually looking at components with respect to the basis B. But in some other situations, you might not have the color coding and you might not have the subscript B. So you just have to be very careful uh, as far as whether you're looking at the vector itself or its components with respect to some basis. So let's keep that in mind and complete this example. So we have to decompose the vector A with respect to this basis. And because I threw the vector A into the basis itself, the components are very easy to find. And they are, of course, 0, 1, and 0. 0, 1, 0. And I made it almost just as easy for the vector B, 0, 0, 8. We, of course, need to take 8 of this vector and therefore negative 8 of this one. So it's negative 8, 0, 8. Negative 8, 0, 8. And now let's calculate this linear combination in component space. Of course, I'm not saying at all that it's easier in this case to do in the component space than in the actual space, but we're just illustrating a point. So 3 of this minus this is 8, 3, negative 8. And here we have the components of the answer. And now we have to translate the components of the answer back to the real answer as we always do as the last step. So we have to take, this won't be too simple, we'll have to take 8 of the first element of the basis, 3 of the second element of the basis, and finally minus 8 of the last element of the basis. And we have 8 plus 21, 29, minus 8, back to 21. So the answer is 21. And, and 8 plus 6, 14, minus 8, back to 6. And finally, 0, 9, minus 8 is 1. And that's our answer. And we once again obtain it by following a three-step journey. Pick a basis and translate all of the elements of the problem into component space. That's step number one. Solve the problem in the component space. Obtain the components of the answer, not the answer itself, but the components of the answer. That's step number two. And the final step, translate the components of the answer into the answer itself. And in this case, by evaluating this linear combination directly, it's actually very easy to tell that we indeed got the right answer. Just making sure 21 minus 0, 6 minus 0 is 6, and 9 minus 8 is 1. So indeed, this scheme works, and this was our third and final example of component spaces with respect to simple addition and the calculation of linear combinations. So we'll now move on to component spaces and linear transformations, a much richer and much more important topic.